Hi guys, so today we're gonna to be continuing the drugstore overview of first spring launches. If you've missed my earlier videos, I will link them down below, but essentially what I'm doing is going through every single drugstore brand out there and looking at everything that they've launched, showing you pictures of everything that's come out, and then going through my reviews of all the products that I've tried. We're gonna be looking at, I think, 25 or 26 different drugstore brands throughout this series. Today's video is going to be focused on Neutrogena and CoverGirl launches. So far, we've also looked at Milan and Flower Beauty and Maybelline and L'Oreal. So if you're interested in those, I will link those either up here in a card or down below for the series. So today's video may be a little bit shorter than some of the other ones. Neutrogena barely put anything out for spring. We'll talk about what they did do. And then CoverGirl did a decent offering, but still not an entirely enormous range the way that a L'Oreal or a Maybelline has. Keep this intro short and get right into what's launched. Up first is Neutrogena. And for a while, I didn't think Neutrogena was going to be putting anything up for spring. But then kind of a late spring entry for them were actually two palettes in collaboration with Kerry Washington. And I love Kerry Washington. I have loved her in Scandal. I've watched that for years. And I just think she is absolutely stunning. So I was really excited to hear that she was doing a collaboration palette palette or two palettes rather with Neutrogena. So they launched two things. One is the Essential Cheek Palette for $9.99 and the other is the Essential Eye Palette for $12.99. I had a chance to see both of these products in my local Ulta and then I also saw Emily Noel do a review of both of these palettes. I chose not to pick up these palettes for a couple of reasons. One, the cheek palette was the one that I was probably the most interested in. And unfortunately that bronzer is definitely, I would say a light medium tone, but it's very, very orange based. So I knew it was not a bronzer that would look great on me. And then the, the blush and the highlighter looked okay in the pan. I can't necessarily evaluate those just by looking at them, but the bronzer was really too orange. And so I thought, you know what, for a little travel palette, I really need all three of those things to work for me. And I could just tell the bronzer wasn't. I do have to mention that I think it's kind of strange. When I look at this essential cheek palette, I kind of thought that bronzer would be a deeper shade. Kerry Washington has the most beautiful dark skin I have like ever seen. I mean, it's stunning. And I just don't see a bronzer this light and this sort of orangey colored working for her. Maybe I'm wrong, but I was kind of surprised we didn't see kind of a, maybe a light medium and a tan deep kind of version of these palettes. So if any of you guys have a deeper skin tone and have tried this palette, I would love to know what your thoughts are on it. My thought when I first looked at it was that I didn't see this working for women of color or certainly even people maybe with tan skin. The Essential Eye Palette just looked a little boring to me, to be totally honest. There's not a ton of depth. So you've got one light shade, one deep shade, and then kind of three right all in the middle. They all appear to be like satin or satin matte shades. So I suppose if you wanted a really simple eyeshadow, you're kind of a one shadow girl, or you really like to keep your eyes super simple or you're a beginner starting out, this might be something that would interest you. I looked at it and thought I was kind of underwhelmed by the shade selection. I wish they had mixed it up a little bit just to include maybe something besides three sort of mid-tone neutrally taupe shades right there in the middle. So I elected not to try any of the offerings from Neutrogena and fortunately that is all Neutrogena has put out for spring. On to CoverGirl. So CoverGirl has recently undergone a whole new branding and I really think that they have done an amazing job at rebranding and refreshing this. I love the very clean lines. I love the black and the white stripe design they're doing on things. Like I just really think that, that what they've done from a branding perspective is top notch. It's making products that they have had out for a long time as they get rebranded look really fresh and clean and modern. So whoever's responsible for on their marketing and advertising team for this rebrand gets two thumbs up for me. I think they did an amazing job. So before we get into the core line, let's talk about what's been released in the Katie Cat line because CoverGirl for the last couple of seasons has been launching a small collection of products with Katy Perry that's all super cat themed and really cute looking and some of the products stay and some of them don't. This year, I was super interested because they released two Katy Cat shadow palettes for $12.99. They had Cool Cat was a lot more of those sort of pastel colors for spring. And then they had Hot Cat. I saw a display with this in my local Walgreens, so I picked up Hot Cat because I actually thought that the color combos in here looked really pretty. I like that you had a cool side and a warm tone side. Historically, I've not really loved the CoverGirl True Naked eyeshadow palettes. They just really haven't done it for me. I found them to be just okay, I guess is what I would say. The first time I swatched the shimmers on the cat faces, I was like, holy crap, like, let me see if I can do this live. Like they swatch 
They swatch so well and so shiny, and I was just blown away by how they looked. And so I was super excited to use this palette because I thought, wow, this could be a really versatile, easy travel palette. It's really compact, it's super cute. It's got great mix of mattes and neutrals and shimmers. But unfortunately, I had real problems with this one fading on me. Like the shimmer shade was completely gone, almost like I had not even put it on. And I had put that on overneath my usual Urban Decay primer potion. So I'm used to shimmer shadows, not really having problems with creasing or fading or anything like that on me. The mattes were okay. I mean, they blended onto the eyes really pretty. Like I was really happy with how the look came together when I actually used the palette. They weren't difficult to use. They blended well. They went on smoothly. They looked great. But like I said, at the end of about an eight hour day, the mattes were probably about 50% gone and the shimmer was just gone. It was like I hadn't even put it on at all. I was shocked. So I tried it another day. I used the shimmers in the middle of my eye again and the same thing happened. So I'm not sure why these don't last on me. I'm sure if I used a glitter glue or a sticky base, I could probably get these to work. But to be totally honest, I really want to reserve those kinds of products when I'm using a glitter or something with fallout. Like, I don't want to have to rely on a super sticky base or glitter glue in order to make an everyday shadow work. That's just, that's, I don't know, maybe that's my hang up. So unfortunately for as pretty as this is and for as nice as the looks come together when I use it on my eyes, I just can't recommend this one because I have such problems with it fading. In the same display as the Katie Cat eyeshadow palettes, they have these little lip gloss glitter combos. These are the Katie Cat Glam Gloss and Body Glitter Kits. These retailed for $8.99. I picked up the shade Catalope. This is not a lip gloss formula I had ever tried before, so I was certainly curious about that. And then and even though this said body glitter, I think in my head I was like, well, I'm not gonna use this on my lips, but I could certainly maybe use some more gold glitter on my eyes. So I picked a combo that I thought would work. Unfortunately, that little glitter was clearly labeled when you open the package for body use only, and it said avoid eye area in big bold letters. So I did end up chucking that one because there's just I'm not gonna have any reason for gold body glitter. So I did try the shade Catalope, and as you can see, she has a whole range of lip glosses. So she's released 12 different shades of this, and there's definitely some fun, funky colors, lots of purples, a funky blue, this sort of prismatic white one, um, and then some pinks and peaches right there in the middle. It has sort of that light, fruity CoverGirl smell. If you've smelled a lot of CoverGirl lip products, this will not be an unfamiliar scent to you. But the thing that's interesting to me is that these are almost more of lip vinyls. So they're a lot thicker and they're a lot more pigmented than you would expect them to be. So you really get full pigmentation on your lips when you use those. So I like both of these colors. I think that they're fun to wear, but they're not something I'm going to be layering with. They're not that lightweight gloss that's going to show any of the color underneath. So I kind of feel like they're mislabeled a little bit as a gloss because in reality, they're more of a full pigmented kind of lip lacquer. Now I will say, although these are thicker, they're not sticky so I don't hate them. So I really dislike a sticky gloss. And these I found to actually be thick without being sticky, which is kind of a difficult thing to achieve. So I do feel like these actually have some longevity. I feel like they kind of lock into place. I don't feel them sliding around my lips at all. Just know going into this, it's not your traditional lip gloss and I don't think you'll be disappointed. The packaging on these is ridiculously cute with the little kitty cat heads on the caps. So all in all, I would say this isn't a product that like blew me away, but I have enjoyed the times that I have worn it. I'm going to apologize in advance if you guys hear neighbors lawn mowers and leaf blowers and all kinds of things. I've been trying to pause between doing this, but I'm filming over a weekend and it's just nice out and so everybody's doing their stuff. So, so if you're hearing some mechanical noises in the background, I do apologize. I'm hoping the microphone isn't picking them up because it's a couple houses down, but I can definitely hear it here in the room. So fingers crossed the audio is okay when I go back and film this. All that to say, let's move on to some CoverGirl brow products. They released something that kind of caught my eye. This is their Easy Breezy Brow Sculpt and Brow Pomade. These retailed for $10.99, they came in four colors. And these absolutely reminded me of the little Benefit Cabrow products where it had the pomade in the bottom and then the cap actually had the little angled brush for applying it. So when Benefit came out with this, what was it, two years ago, I thought it was just such a clever design. And I really did like this pomade as well. I 
definitely think that this brow palmate is comparable to the Benefit one. So not only is the design similar, it has the little angled brush built into the cap, but the product itself is very easy to apply. It's pigmented, but it's not super, super pigmented. I really am enjoying the shade Soft Brown. It's a really nice medium brown that is very cool toned and ashy versus warm. So I feel like it's gonna work for a lot of different tones. I will say this is a very similar tone to the ColourPop Brow Pomade and Dope Taupe. I love that one. However, I will say this one's probably about a shade, maybe two shades deeper than that one. All in all, I have loved this product. I think it works really well on my brows. I do like a brow pomade and I do appreciate ones like this because it allows me to travel with it and not have to pack an extra angled liner brush to do my brows in the morning. So if you think there's a shade here that might work for you, there are only four, unfortunately, but if there's a color here that looks like it would match your brows, I don't think you'd be disappointed from this pomade. And I would go so far as to say, I do think it's probably a dupe for the Benefit Cabral. They also released some smaller fine tip pencils. These are their Breezy Microfine Fill Plus Define Eyebrow Pencils. These retail for $7.99. These also came in four different shades. I feel like every brand now has that sort of brow whiz dupe out there now. This is L'Oreal's offering. I personally don't like those Microfine pencils. I feel like it takes me forever to do my brows with them. So I skipped over this one. Also released a new eyeshadow palette in their True Naked line. So this is their True Naked Smoky Eyeshadow Palette. This retailed for $11.99. It definitely has a ton of sort of shimmery, silvery, charcoal gray, blackish shades in here. I looked at this in the store and I thought, I'm never gonna use this. I don't do a lot of smoky eyes to begin with. And when I do, I definitely want some warmer transition shades or some browns to kind of neutralize it and not make it quite so cool toned. That's my personal preference for smoky eye. So this one I skipped on. They also released a lid lockup eyeshadow primer for $8.99. This is one I skipped over because I just did and think it was something that really intrigued me. I figured it was your basic silicone eyeshadow primer and I like a little bit of tint in mine, which is why I use Eden from Urban Decay. I feel like it neutralizes some of the discoloration on my eyelids as well as providing a good base for shadow to stick to. I have since heard that this lid lockup is a dupe for the Eden or similar to Eden. So I am actually kind of curious about picking this one up in the future, but I don't have a full review for you to hear now. I will try and find the reviewers that I have heard talk about this product and link those reviews below if I can. They also released Get In Line eyeliners for $8.99. This came in five colors. I personally don't love felt tip liners, either ones that come in a pen form or ones they have to dip into a pot. I really prefer brush tip liners, so I did skip over these. They released a color correcting palette. So this is the True Brand color correcting palette. It retailed for $10.99. It came with a green, sort of a periwinkle blue and a yellow color corrector. I will admit I'm not huge into color correcting. I don't have a ton of redness, so I haven't really found the need to use a green color corrector. And to be honest, when I have used green color corrector, I feel like it gives a weird green cast to my skin even when I put makeup over the top. So green's never been a color I love a ton. Yellow's never looked great on my skin tone and I've never found a need for blue. So this wasn't a palette that interested me in the least. Also released some concealers in their Vitalist line. So these are their Vitalist Healthy Concealer Pens. These retail for $10.99. They came in six shades. I got the lightest shade Fair. I had a couple issues with this product. One, I think the shade is too dark for me. So the shade Fair, historically in CoverGirl products, has not been fair. It's been a light, maybe even a deeper light tone in most of their products. So I found that anything they label fair or porcelain is never as light as it needs to be. That is definitely the case for this one. It also dries down at least a shade, if not two shades darker underneath my eyes. I find that it gives extremely light medium coverage. Like I would almost consider this light coverage because I just felt like I was having to go back on and put several layers of this to even get a medium coverage. Now, I are plenty of days where I don't need tart shape tape levels of coverage. So I don't mind a medium coverage concealer at all. In fact, today I'm wearing the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. It's a medium coverage concealer. I still think I can see a little bit of the blue in the corners of my eyes, but in general, it's covered what I've needed it to. I just find that this one gives so much less coverage. Like I have to do two layers of this to get this level of coverage. And then when I do, I find that it just looks cakey. It sits weird on my skin. It looks a little dry. So two layers definitely makes this product not work for me. And one layer, it's like, 
I don't even know why I would bother putting on concealer. I will say I pulled up the Ulta website just a second ago to double check how much product was in this tube because it's not actually listed on here. And this is like getting one star on Ulta. A huge portion of those people are giving it one star because they can't get the product to work uh, because the clicker is not actually moving product up through and into the brush tip applicator. I should mention brush tip applicators are not my favorite, but at the end of the day, I can make a brush tip work. I'm not gonna knock a really awesome concealer just for a brush tip, but a whole bunch of people clearly are having issues with defective packaging too. So that's kind of a mark against this one. Yeah, I think there's just better drugstore concealers out there. Next up, they released a Look Lock Up Makeup Setting Spray for $11.99. I really haven't been in the market for testing a lot of new true setting sprays. I've tested some moisturizing sort of brightening sprays, but true makeup setting sprays, I will admit I haven't really done a lot of testing on, so I did skip that one. They also released four shades, just four, of the Vitalist Healthy Setting Powder for $11.99. I don't know if they're gonna expand the shade range at some point, but this is gonna work for a handful of people. The classic ivory shade looked too dark for me, so I skipped over it. This is also a talc-based powder, so it wasn't one that I was like super gaga to test. I find that a lot of talc-based powders tend to look a little heavy on my skin, and I'm not looking to add coverage when I powder my foundation. I'm just looking to set it. So this wasn't one that I was really interested in. They also released six shades of a cream highlighter. This is their Vitalist Healthy Glow Highlighter. These retailed for $10.99. I have seen this formula before. It came out last year with a Katy Cat line. They released two shades and I picked one of them up and it was awful. It was so thick and putty-like that I couldn't get it to blend out on my skin at all. It was just goopy feeling. And then I thought, well, maybe if I can't use it on my cheeks, I'll use it on my eyelids and then maybe it'll be like a nice cream shadow. Didn't work on there, creased on me, didn't set down. So I did not enjoy the formula of these at all. And when I looked at these in store, I'm like, oh, yep, that's the same product. Just they've released more shades and put it in their core line. So did not love this, wouldn't recommend them as a cream highlighter. I just think they're way too goopy and difficult to work with. They also released a Vitalist Go Glow Luminizing Lotion. This retailed for $10.99 in two shades. I believe this is kind of one of those bronzing glow lotions. So when you want your overall skin to feel very bronzed and golden, you can either put this on your body or put it on your face. Bronzing all over with deeper goldeny shades like this isn't something that I would never do because it just would look bizarre on someone as fair as me. So I did skip over these. I think if you have a tan to deep skin tone, you might really enjoy these either on your body or perhaps to give a nice glow all over your face. But for me, that was kind of a skip product. As far as lip products, they've released a couple of things. So they launched the Vitalist Tinted Lip Oil for 524. There were six shades in this. None of the shades really appealed to me and I was kind of thinking it looked almost more like a lip stain oil when I was looking at these in store and I don't know. I have a few tinted lip oils that I enjoy but it's not a product that I'm like crazy for so I made the decision to skip these. They also released Melting Pout Glitz Liquid Lipsticks for $7.99. They released a gold and a silver one. These just look like lip glosses in a tube that had silver or gold glitter running through them. So didn't really feel like that was something I needed or wanted to try for my collection. The thing that I was really excited about were these. These are their Melting Pout Matte Liquid Lipsticks for $7.99. They have 11 different shades in this. I picked up two of them, sort of lighter shade and then also a mid-tone shade because I wanted to see how the formula was. To me, this is more of a NYX soft matte lipstick or the Revlon HD Matte Liquid Lipsticks. So it's sort of that moussey texture that can be a little streaky on application, but oftentimes if you work with it, you can sometimes get the streakiness to go away, sometimes not based on the shades. And then they're matte, but they're not necessarily transfer proof, but that also makes them not super drying. So. I think I would be more apt to like these or want to work with them more if not for the smell. So the smell of these is just, it is pure nasty chemical. Like I don't know how to describe it. It's really strong and really tangy chemical scent. Like I, it's really bad. And they've obviously tried to add some sort of fragrance to cover up whatever dimethicone smell is giving these lipsticks that scent that chemicaliness. But I feel like the fragrance they're adding is just compounding the problem. And so now you've got this like, I don't know, it makes your eyes almost water to smell it. And unfortunately, it's one of those ones that I continue to smell even once it's on my lips. And then it gives my lips sort of a chemically taste once they're on. So 
you know, the two shades I have are fine. I got them to work. Both of them are a little streaky on first application. You can get usually an even coating with a couple of passes through your lips, but I just, I can't recommend these. The smell is just horrific. And then like every drugstore brand out there, they have released a holographic lip gloss. So this is their Melting Pout Holographic Lip Color. It retails for $7.99. It is exclusive to Ulta. It comes in eight different shades. It does appear to have some interesting shades. Tingle Shade and Kindle and Big Bang and Revelry. Like these are interesting looking shades. They are ones I might consider picking up. None of my local Ultas have actually gotten them in stock yet and I really wanted to see the colors of these before I tried any of them, but this might be something that I give a whirl to in the future, but wasn't something that I wanted to just purchase sight unseen off a website. CoverGirl and Neutrogena didn't put out a ton in comparison to some of the other drugstore brands we've talked about, but I hope this was helpful giving you an overview of what's launched. I certainly have seen a ton of new products starting to come out this summer for CoverGirl, some new foundations and some other products. So I'm definitely got my eye out for what CoverGirl is gonna continue to launch and rebrand as they kind of go through this kind of new thought process from a product marketing perspective as well as a branding. So I'm curious to see what's coming out from CoverGirl. I'm super curious about the new foundation. But like I said, this video was focused on what really launched during the springtime. So during the months of kind of January to April. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. There's a lot more videos like this coming here soon. Up next, we're going to be talking about Revlon and Almay. And then and we're moving on to Essence and there's some physician's formula in the near future as well. I hope you guys are having a great day. Look forward to talking to you guys soon. Bye.